You guys, welcome back to the channel. Listen, the last 48 hours have been a complete clown show, okay? And Kamala Harris's team is going full throttle on their ads, and the ads are ridiculous. And we're going to talk about it. We can't even cover it all on this one video, but we are going to talk about this interview, okay? Because thanks to your boy Obama, okay, he has sparked a chain reaction in all of his rhetoric, blaming black men or accusing black men of being not man enough or afraid or insecure, right? This is the new propaganda that the Democrats are pushing. They are going after the men, saying that the men are the problem. The men don't want to vote for Kamala, right? They have an ad about white men not doing it. They got an ad about black men and saying, listen, don't let your fear of a woman in leadership be the reason why you don't vote. Man up, right? Like that's the whole messaging behind it and this is sparking a conversation where now women are turning against the men okay and this has been a big problem especially in the black community there's been a clash in a lot of spaces in reference to why men vote the way they want to vote this is an ongoing battle within the black community for those who don't know or not aware we're constantly clashing with people who want to be free thinkers Right. You don't want to you go against the hive mind. You're a sellout. You're a coon. You're a racist. You're a traitor to your people. OK, we've seen this happen with Ice Cube, who just brought a different train of thought, the correct thought. And they dragged him, especially the black women on social media. So this is a big problem. And so Obama knows this. He understands the intricacies and the thinkings of black people. So he knows how to gaslight. He's a professional gaslighter and he's a phenomenal speaker okay and he sows his seeds of deception through his speeches and those who have ears to hear and an eye to see and a mind of understanding you can see it clear as day if you're not brainwashed or if you haven't drank the kool-aid okay so here's the problem that i have the problem is the party the blue team who claims to be about a, a just getting rid of racism and, and racism is bad, they are the team that uses racism and identity politics and they weaponize these things to gaslight people into voting for them, okay? They are the party of racism, you guys, and it's clear as day. We're gonna hear this in this interview, I'm gonna play, because I wanna get your thoughts these women are having about this idea or the thing that Obama said. Again, just the idea that you are telling people to vote for someone else because of their skin color is the epitome of racism. Black people are becoming just as racist as the racist people they don't like, okay? So again, this is so troubling to me, but, but, but don't take my word for it. Let's hear what these women have to say. They're debating this, they're having this topic about what Obama said and whether or not there's any truth to it. Are men falling short? Are men the reason why Kamala Harris' ship is sinking? You guys know Kamala is the reason why her ship is sinking. There's a lot of qualified women out here who would be a, a better candidate than Kamala, but we already know what time it is, you guys. The Democrats are all about the puppet show, okay? And they put up puppets, they put up people who are going to do what they're told, and that's just what it is. So, Okay, so let's take a look at this discussion. Um, they are going to break down their thoughts about what Obama said. Like I said, Obama kicked off this spark, and the women are running with it. The media is running with it. It's now becoming the new the new propaganda line. They already had their marketing material put in place for this speech that he gave. Obama is a professional. He knows what he's doing. He's a professional gaslighter. This is all a part of their plan to try to blame men and guilt them into voting for them. OK, and to cause tension between the men and the women. OK, so let's take a look at this break down get their thoughts on how much men are impacting especially black men okay so what do we have we don't have any black men or men on this panel but we have an indian woman a white woman and a black trans woman <laughs> okay so let's hear what they have to say about this we have not yet seen the same kinds of energy and turnout in all quarters of our neighborhoods and communities as we saw when I was running. I've got a problem with that because, because part of it 
makes me think, and I'm speaking to men directly, part of it makes me think that, well, you just aren't feeling the idea of having a woman as president. Mm -hmm. And you're coming up with other alternatives and other reasons for that. President Obama there. Obviously, uh, he ha has still remained hugely popular. I mean, Cheney's being used now by the Democrats. What did you make of his address yesterday? As somebody who used to work for President Obama and was on both campaigns, I thought that he was speaking to a demographic that is largely only visible online when it comes to the attacks that we've seen largely lobbed by the right against um, uh, black male voters. What we know and what the numbers bear out is that black women vote uh, in lockstep for the Democratic Party at, at near 98 percentile, black men at 95 percent. 98 percent black women vote Democrat. Jesus Christ. 95% for black men. Listen, I don't care. That's your personal choice. Vote for who you want. Just mind your business when someone doesn't want to vote the way you vote. It's just that simple. That's the real issue, you guys. All right. The real issue here is the white vote. Um, white misogyny, we know, leads that, leads for Republicans, and they found a misogynist in chief in Donald J. Trump. We know that white women have consistently broke for the Republicans. They did it in 2016. They've done it in midterms. They've done it in several elections since that. The issue is you now you're trying to label people because you don't like the way they vote. OK, it's the white misogyny, right? Like it's almost like it's a special group of people. It's no, it's just because I don't want to vote for you doesn't make me a misogynist. OK, I don't. You're basically saying that, which, which what misogyny is, is uh, men that dislike women, right? Like, you don't like women. No, I, I don't like that woman, okay? I don't like that woman is the one I don't like. And and it's not because she's a woman why I don't like her. I don't like her personality. I don't like her character. I don't like her policies. I don't think she's credible. And I don't think she's capable of doing the job. So what they try to do is assign a title, a label, because this is how they gaslight, right? This is what they do. But this is what makes it dangerous, right? They do this all the time. It's their tactic. If you vote for Trump, you're not black, okay? That's another one. If you vote for Trump and you're white, that means you're a racist. If you vote for Trump or if you're a conservative or you're a Republican and you're black, you're a sellout. These are tactics, psychological tactics that they use, and they weaponize those words in order to shame people. But I think people have caught on. A lot of people have caught on. You know, the black community is very big at doing this, you guys. If you try to get educated in certain aspects, there's some people who look at you like, oh, why are you trying to, uh, why do you sound so white when you talk? I'm like, I'm speaking English, you know? Oh, you like horseback riding? That's a white thing. You know, you guys, when I was growing up, if you like to be on a skateboard, that was a white thing to do, right? Until you have like some rappers who start making it popular. But this is what black people do. We do it within our own community. And the people who are trying to win us over also know our shortcomings and they what? They take leverage on that and they weaponize that. So what is she saying that's a problem? She just assigned an entire demographic and called them misogynists and said that we know that white men, white male misogynists vote like this. And I think that the real question here and the real pushback should be, why are white voters, particularly white Christian voters, deciding that it is OK to continue to support, continue to vote for someone who is twice impeached, someone who has been found liable for rape, someone who has over 25 credible allegations of sexual assault, someone who instigated the January 6th insurrection? Why is that OK for them? In America, the shift that we've seen largely in, um, in demographic shifts towards the Republicans has actually come from Latinos, not black men. And, but nevertheless, it was interesting that President Obama did ad address the men in the way that he did. It has caused a bit of a debate, hasn't it, about raising, the, you know, the question of potential misogyny. D you know, do you think he was politically wise to do that? So you see how she starts to basically categorize everybody, okay? Uh, we, it's, it's white people who are the problem, okay? It's white people who are the problem. Not just any white people, 
white Christian voters, right? So now she's trying to put shame, put some type of shaming tactic on them to be like, oh, now they, they, they second, now they're going to second guess themselves. Oh, as a Christian, should I really be voting for Trump? <laughs> you know, instead of talking about the policies that Christians don't support from Kamala, right? No one wants to talk about that. No one wants to talk about the policies that are actually turning voters off. Instead, we want to play identity politics. And this is where the Democrats lose me. They lost me a long time ago. This is the issue that I have with the Democrats. It's their tactics. It's their deceptive, disgusting, psychological tactics that they play. I don't support it, you guys. I don't support it. And this is what she's doing. She's calling out Christians. She's calling out men. She's calling out white men, white women. How do you vote for this man and you call yourself a Christian? That's the game, the gaslighting. All right, that's the gaslighting. I think they're talking about misogyny in an election where a woman is running, in particular a woman of color, where we've seen misogynistic comments used against um, Kamala Harris, be it about her dating history, be it about questions about people who she has engaged with um, early on in her career, be it about attacks on her being a woman. We've seen those things happen, largely, again, driven by the right. Do I think that it's an important conversation to have? Absolutely. Listen. When you run for office, you guys, we all know this at any levels of government, whether it's state or federal, they are pulling up all your business. And as a as your opposing your opposing side, they are going to try to dig up all your dirt. That's that's what comes with playing this game. According to this um, trans woman here, she has an issue with them, with with Kamala playing the game that they've always played. OK, when it's men running and they're doing these, they're digging up dirt on Trump's past or Obama's past or whatever. It's only an issue now because the person is a person of color and the person is a woman. OK, it's almost like she's a woman. She shouldn't have to be subjected to the same type of foolishness. Every other candidate for the history of this country has gone through. That's how the game goes. They pull up your past. They dig it up. They try to make up stories about you, they exaggerate events to try anything to get you to lose voters, okay? That's the name of the game. I don't care for it, okay? Unless it's factual and, and it's relevant, I'm not with the games. I want to know what your policies are. I want to know how, what type of integrity you have. Can you do the job, okay? That's what I care about. Are you speaking to the issues that matter to me? And are you speaking to issues that matter to the country, okay? That's the most important thing for a president, are you dealing with things that matter to the country? OK, so with this thing, again, this becomes more about she's a woman and we don't like how they've been treating her as a woman. You're being treated like everybody gets treated. OK, that's how politics go. And if you have some shady business you're doing coming up the ranks, it's fair game, okay? It's fair game. They do it to everybody. The truth is they do it more to some than others. And we know that to be a fact, okay? So, you know, she's just kind of really just rambling at this point. But, you know, blame it on misogyny. I guess that's, that's the out. Much of this is the same conversation we were having with the last woman who was the Democratic nominee in Hillary Clinton. Here we are again, how many years later, having the same conversation. Misogyny is, on, is not only something that is affecting the United States, it's affecting women leaders across the globe. What she's failing to realize is that they were actually real legitimate issues that people had with Hillary. In my mind, I never, I didn't vote for Hillary. I didn't care for her, but... At no point in time did I ever say, I don't want a woman to run. I don't think that women are capable of running. I'm, I don't think like that. I'm looking at what she represents, the things that she's done. I don't like career politicians, so that's already a big turnoff for me. But again, this is a disingenuous argument because you're kind of you're, you're kind of just bypassing all the issues people have with Hillary. You're bypassing all the issues people have with Kamala, and you're basically just ignoring that and saying that it's because she's a woman why people don't like her no people don't like her for a lot of legitimate reasons same thing with hillary uh and so should a woman ever run for president i think so i think if you find a good woman who a matter of fact i think i know about two that i think will be good presidents but again okay they're not running i honestly would like to see someone younger 
with more vigor, okay? All these old people, senior citizens running for president, I don't care for that, to be honest. So, but again, the games that this country plays, they make it so that it's so hard to get quality people, well-rounded people to come up and, and, and really do it. You need to have money, you know? To be honest, money is the factor that keeps a lot of quality people from running for office. Uh, so that's a big issue, these super PACs, to be honest. But, you know, what do I know? But I do think that the IR needs to be placed where it belongs, on the singular voting block that consistently votes alongside misogyny that upholds white supremacy. That is conservatives, that is white men, and the white women who actually, you know, help that vote to sell because they continue to break for the MAGA party and for Donald Trump. This is being sparked by Obama. And this whole idea, what the Democrats push a lot is that the Republicans are racist, the conservatives are racist, they want white supremacy back, they want to... If you align yourself with their views or if you just decide to be become conservative, you prefer their policies, then you're betraying your race. You should vote for someone because her skin color. You should vote for her because she's a woman. And if you don't vote for her, it's because you hate women. <laughs> Kamala represents the ultimate weapon that they can weaponize, race and gender. So now if you don't like her, legitimately don't like her because her policies suck and she's just not a good representative for uh, a, a leadership position for a lot of different reasons. She's not articulate. She's not confident. She has no clue as to what policy she's going to put out. She can't have a conversation. She acts like a robot so forth and so on. You're like, ah, I'm not feeling the things that she says. I think she's a complete imbecile. Somehow they translate it as you don't like women. You're a misogynist because you don't want to vote for her. Not because you're an intelligent person and you can obviously see the obvious. Then they hit you with the second piece, racism. You don't like Kamala because she's a minority. She's they call they're calling her black. She's not black. She's biracial. But they're able to leverage her skin complexion and then shame you by saying if you don't vote for her and you're a white person, it's because you're a racist. And if you're a white man or a black man, you don't vote for her, it's because you're a misogynist. You guys, <laughs> the game is getting so old. <laughs> Those tactics are so, so played out. And Obama, shame on you, brother. Shame on you. Another biracial man posing to be black. Welcome to America. <laughs>